So for, uh, let's, let's begin with what we have to do today. Uh, you see, we have, a, we, we have been discussing uh, several theoretical aspects for the study of language. Okay? Uh, we started with principles and sets of parameters and we, we saw how they work. Then we started looking at the, the aspects of principles and parameters. That is, this whole theoretical approach is a collection of several modules, okay? several modules. And then we looked at some of those modules uh, separately, like uh, x bar theory, theta theory, case theory. Um, uh, binding theory that is that is called anaphoric relations and and several other things in in total you see as a as a note here uh, since i must tell you the whole approach of principles and parameters is also known as modular approach okay it was it was <coughs> coming up developing simultaneously with Computers revolution in the world, not only, not only revolutions in cognitive science, but computer revolutions in the world. I am sure I do not need to go into details to tell you the, the comparison or anything else about computers, that the kind of small machines we have 20 years ago or maybe 30 years or definitely 40 years ago big size machines did not have that much capacity to perform several, uh, several tasks, several actions, right? So, and, and that is an accepted fact, that is a historical thing as we know. And as you also know, uh, now machines are also very much modular. We can take, what, what, I, what I mean by modular is very simple and then I will come back to language. We can take one part of machine, fix it and put it together and then the machine works, right? So, for, for, a, small, for a machine to work, we do not need to disrupt everything else. Am I, am I right when I say this is a modular approach? Similar things were experimented with language that if we are only looking at case, we need to look at just case and several other theoretical uh, apparatus to, to, this, to explain how it works. And this, while discussing case, we do not need to bring in anaphoric relations. And then we do not need to, need, need to bring in um, uh, movement and, and everything. Uh, some claim that the, the modular approach just, just like the multitasking of machines developed through cognitive revolution and looking at the, the capacity of human mind to, to perform several tasks at a time, uh, machines were designed to perform several tasks at a time. It has been claimed not very emphatically, these are the, these are, uh, uh, inferences to great extent and some uh, mild uh, claims that looking at the such developing uh, and building upon such capacities, uh, modularity in machines were also developed. We do not have to be religious or fanatic about these things. Uh, some people claim the other way around. Because modularity of machines were developing at the same time, people looked at modularity of uh, 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 several theoretical aspects explaining language. We still do not know whether <laughs> language really works in a modular way in human mind. We know how it works to a great extent. We know how to explain several aspects of language, but we do not really know 
whether it really works in a modular fashion or in some other some other way that that would be too tall a claim so that was just a uh, side note uh, which is a cross reference to uh, cognitive revolutions and then applications to machines now coming back as you can see the see the title uh, of what i am going to discuss with you my, the idea is to to talk to you about a particular aspect of linguistic theory and see how it helps us explain an aspect of south asian language how does that work okay and that will give us an idea of how to look at our own languages i mean we i know in a in a very short class we have been able to look at the theoretical modules and several theoretical aspects but we didn't get enough time to look at uh, hindi data or tamil data or telugu data or malayalam data to see how they work besides uh, sov and vso and and uh, some some generic uh, things so this is what uh, what i want to do uh, uh, at least for today and uh, probably it will need uh, to give a, a conclusive shape it will need one more more hour uh, so see see how this how this works so do, do you get the idea what what we want to do and for that i have i have chosen negation uh, and uh, there are there are two reasons for negation a i have uh, personally worked on negation and i understand how it works at least in one language uh, my idea is to work on uh, the negative aspects of not the negative aspects in terms of negative negation of other languages uh, uh, how negation functions in other south asian languages uh, that's my idea uh, but but that's that's a different story so i, I want to take some examples from negatives our uh, negation sentences from hindi and show you how it works and see if it helps us uh, apply the theoretical concepts that we have learnt at least to some extent so see uh, very simple so far we shouldn't have any difficulty there are three negative markers in hindi okay they are words like nahi mat and na out of the three two of them are most frequently used that is nahi and mat okay nahi and mat uh i am not saying na is not an important one but sometimes it's it goes with nahi sometimes it's close to mat basically it's a short form of nahi okay and uh, so so these are the three three words that's not very interesting that's interesting only for the purpose of uh, recognizing a negation word right most of the not most availability of negation is a universal phenomena of language there is no language in the world which does not have a device to indicate negation okay it's a universal phenomena now how any how a language expresses its its, its negation becomes parametric okay in some, for example in some languages negation may be a word like nahi okay or mat in some languages it may be a marker on the verb or some other word all right in some languages it it may surface in some other way okay we don't have data available of for classification of negation words across languages but before i move i again want to underline two points negation as a phenomena is universal feature of human languages that's one number two how they get represented in a language is parametric 
Okay. Now, let us begin from uh, once we agree or we, we can claim or we are in a position to claim about a phenomena being universal, then it does not remain theoretically challenging for linguists. It, it fits in a particular pattern and then works nicely. Right? What becomes more challenging is the moment we see some parametric things coming in. Only then you will need to look at them in order to classify them further or explain them further. Okay? So, let us start with the parametric approach. When I said there are two, at least two broad ways of negation surfacing in languages. One is in a word, as a word. The other is as a marker on some other word. Okay? Now, let me, let me draw your attention to two things with these two broad categorization. When they are a word, they are a lexical item. Right? And when they are when they are a marker on some other word, then it is a morphological item. Right? It is a morphological item. You understand what I mean by morphological item? Okay. The moment it becomes morphological, it becomes semi-syntactic. That is morphosyntactic. These are just the terms and I, I want you to understand these terms very coolly, calmly. They are, they are not complicated terms. The moment and, and when it is a word, it becomes a lexical item. So, what is the, what's the issue? What is the main issue here? The main issue is, is negation a lexical thing or is it a syntactic thing? In other words, is it a functional thing? That is the broader question. That is the broader question when we get into abstraction of negation. When people saw negation as a word, it is very easy to get tempted to make a generalization that it is a lexical item. What is the, what's the problem with this? But when you get in touch with other languages and see, no, 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 no it is not that simple. Sometimes it is on the, sometimes it is, it is as a marker on something else. Sometimes it is infixed with verbs. It must not be only a lexical unit. Okay? And even though it is a lexical unit, what is it? Abstract representation, is it, does, do they belong to, do they belong to, uh, uh, yeah. Do they belong to the lexical layer of a, sen of, of a sentence or to the functional layer? That's, that becomes a broad <coughs> question at the abstract level where we need to explain this theoretically. All right? Now, you can see, I, I can remind you, uh, since while I, while I am discussing negation in Hindi, uh, you can keep looking at negation of English, which I will cross refer time to time. And then I invite you to keep in mind and see how negation works in Tamil, Telugu and other languages that you speak. Okay? See how it works. At least for Tamil, uh, I understand that sometimes it appears as a marker on the verb also. Right? It it is not always the word, what is the what is the negation word in Tamil? Illa, right? It it is spoken differently in different uh, different parts, but illa, not every time this remains a negation word, right? For example, when someone says I do not want tea, how do we say that? So, where is illa? So, do you, do you see what I am trying to say? It is a, it, it's on the verb and there is no negation word. That is, I am sorry, I am not saying no negation word. It appears in a different form. Right? Sometimes, okay, okay, hold on. So, so that, that, that is all was my point. The, the other point that I am trying to make is uh, negation most of the time it stays around verb. And again, at this stage, it should not be a surprising thing for you. 
and, and it should not be a surprising thing for you that it stays around the world. Okay? And here are the conclusions that we can draw from its location around the world. If you are, if you are asked to talk about the most significant part of a sentence, what is it? I mean, every part is, is, is important in its own way, but what is the most important part? Why verb? Uh, why not subject as Sandeep is saying? Why verb? Sentence cannot exist. No, that's that, that's okay, but why why verb is more important than subject? Because it is the one that is agreeing with the subject. Not not just because of that. See now you now your question should now your answer should be more precise, because it hosts all other information. It hosts abstract informations. It can keep tense. It can keep aspect. It can retain agreement features in terms of masculine, feminine, singular, plural. So, it is like a powerhouse. Therefore, it is the most important part of a, of a sentence. And if the negation stays around the verb, it should not be a surprising thing. The fact that negation stays around the verb makes us investigate it even more carefully. Is it part of lexical layer or functional layer? Get the, get the thing? That is one. And the fact that sometimes it appears on the verb as a marker in some language, that even if it appears as a marker on the verb in one language of the world, it gives us more than enough evidence to investigate it further whether or not it is a functional category. Get, get it? That's the, that's, that is what we were, we are basically getting at, Num number one. And before I come, one more particular aspect about negation. The fact that it stays around the, around the verb, most of the time in many languages or in most of the languages, it precedes the verb. However, in some languages, it may follow the verb too. Sometimes it follows the verb in, in, in Tamil. I am sure it will follow verbs in Telugu, uh, Malayalam and other languages too. In Indo-Aryan languages as well, uh, Bangla is one such example where it follows the verb, whereas in, in, in most of the Indo-Aryan languages, it precedes the verb. Get the, get, get the, get the point? The, and the effect on of, a sen, of a negation on a sentence is such that the moment it negates the verb, it negates the entire sentence, which also underlines significance of a verb, that in order to negate the entire sentence, you only need to negate the verb. Okay? So, when I, when you say something like, uh, what was the Tamil sentence with Venda? I, 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 let us say, I do not want tea. Right? In this sentence, we have three, three aspects, subject, object and verb. Right? Negation has very little to do with subject, it is not negating subject, it has very little to do with the object, it is not negating the object, it is only negating the verb and then the sentence becomes negative, which underlies the, underlines the significance of both negation and the verb and the relationship between negation and verb. All right? So, having said that, can I, without, without getting into too much of details, I want you to pay attention to the conclusion part of, of this, that unlike other functional elements, negation appears to be a lexical unit. What do we mean when I say unlike other elements, other functional elements, for example, tense, for example, aspect, okay? uh, agreement markers, these are clearly morphosyntactic features of verb, on the verb, of a, of a sentence and they hardly appear as a full word. Okay? However, negation most of the time in many Indo-Aryan languages and in lot of uh, Dravidian languages and other languages of the world seem to appear as a lexical unit. Therefore, it seems very easy for us to believe that it might be a lexical item. However, uh, it is located in the 
functional layer. Even though it is a word in many languages, it still is part of functional layer and it heads its own phrase, which we are going to see in a, in a minute. For the time being, let me just, let me quickly show you uh, a sentence. Uh, these are two Hindi sentences. I just need to make two points, but I, I need you to look at these two sentences very carefully. If you are, if you are writing a sentence of your language or any language other than English, then this is how you need to write a sentence. First, with the transcription, that there is an error that the R in Raju should have been smaller one in the first sentence and so D in Delhi in the second sentence. Uh, that is an error. So, that is a phonetic transcription. Then word by word glossing what these words mean to the possible extent and then finally meaning of the sentence in English. This is a convention to write a sentence so that anyone who does not even know the language can find out what the sentence is, how does it read and what is it that you are trying to highlight in that, in, in that sentence. Okay? So, just two points that I want to make here. The word nahi in the first sentence, look at the word nahi in the first sentence, it is right before the verb negating the entire sentence. However, in the first sentence, the use of the negation marker mat is not allowed. In the second sentence, it is all right. So, which one is more generic negation marker? Clearly, nahi. Math has a restrictive environment to appear, which is it appears only in imperative sentences. And now, for imperative sentences, you can say two more sentences that these are non finite sentences, right? The tenseless sentences, and only in those sentences, math appears as a negation marker, whereas nahi is a more generic negation marker in a language like Hindi. And, and this, this categorical, this, this distinction between two negative markers is feature of most of the South Asian languages at least. Okay? So, some, some sort of this categorization will be available in all the languages that we speak. I, I just leave you to check that. All right? I need to move to a different point. Is that clear? And then we have already talked about how it works. Let me show you what we, what I mean by functional layer. And if I had more time to get into more details to show you, okay, wh why I am asking if I had more time, I will talk to you in a, about that in a moment. Do you see this structure? Looks familiar? Right? Whether we start a, a, a note here, whether we start the structure with an IP okay, or a TP or an AGRP, either, either way and I, I hope you understand what I mean when I say AGRP, TP or IP in different, different frameworks. Here are the conclusions. Negation is always part of lexical, I am sorry, always part of functional layer. If we go into the details of that, what we find is it is located below TP and above aspect phrase. That is the point which I want to make in a very strong way. And there is evidence available for this in natural language. This is why I, I was saying if I had more time to show you how actually this evidence comes. Okay? The, and, and, and here, let, 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 me, let me try briefly and see if it, if it works. Is it clear to you that it heads its own phrase, which is neg p, and you understand the structure of a phrase very well. It will have a spec, it will have a head, and then it will have a complement, and then what follows is aspect phrase. Okay? This, 
this becomes clearer only when you get into the details of the functional layer. As long as you are staying with IP, okay, still you know that negation phrase appears before VP. All right. So, VP is the point from where we start lexical layer. Right? Is this is this making sense to people in general? That's okay. All right. Now, uh, let me let me try very briefly uh, to talk about the evidence which supports this. Okay. For for the purpose of this class, I can simply uh, make this inform you about this and move. But I, I do want to uh, to talk about that so that you you see it in a convincing way. You see, I talk to you about the position of negation in a sentence. What is the position of negation in a sentence? Around the verb, mostly preceding the verb, right? And then it negates the verb. All right. Negation may occur elsewhere also in the sentence. Okay. Else it may occur elsewhere in the sentence too. For example, I can give you one Hindi example. I don't have, don't have it on the screen, but I can say, and you you can understand. I can say, main nahi Delhi jaunga. Main nahi Delhi jaunga. Do you hear this sentence clearly? Main nahi Delhi jaunga. Where is the place of negation in this sentence? Is it around the verb? No. Right? Where is it? And, and I am not asking in terms of the structure. I am asking only it only in terms that it is not around the, the verb. Right? What is the meaning of that sentence? If you if some of you understand Hindi, what is the meaning of that sentence? Main nahi Delhi jaunga. What do we what does one want to say with that sentence? I won't go to Delhi, someone else will go. I won't go to Delhi, someone else will go. Right? Now, where is this someone else will go coming from? We are not saying that. Where is this coming from? First, first of all, do you see the do you see the sentence clearly? And what he is saying is right. That the sentence actually gives you the reading. More importantly, that I will not go. I mean, someone else will go. Is the message? Where is this message someone else coming from? Maybe because the negation word is placed right after the subject. That is true. But then what is the effect of that? The effect is when it is not around the verb, it is a different kind of negation. See, when it is around the verb, it is called sentential negation, which means it negates the entire sentence. When it is not near the verb, Please see that sentence carefully. The verb is not negated. The sentence is not about not going. The sentence is about not me. Someone else will go. Someone else will go to Delhi. Not me. Okay? That is to say, if it is not around the verb, then it negates only the part that it follows. Listen to this carefully. In a, in a, in the example that I have given you, the example comes from Hindi, and in Hindi, and in many other Indo-Aryan languages and Dravidian languages too, when negation is not around the verb, it does not negate the verb. Therefore, it does not negate the whole sentence, and in such a case, it negates only the part that it follows. Such a negation is called constituent negation. That is, it negates 
only that constituent main nahi delhi jaunga meaning someone else not me will go to delhi so will go to delhi is not negated clear therefore this meaning is coming from someone else will go got this all right so with this i introduced to you the phenomena called constituent negation and uh, its contrast with sentential negation let me let me exploit this phenomena to give you to bring an evidence in support of what i am saying look at the verb look at the sentence following the, the following sentence how do we say in hindi i am not eating pizza i am not eating pizza main pizza nahi kha raha hu see this things see this thing let me use the board for a moment here is the point that i am trying to make main pizza nahi kha raha hmm. clear i will i'll write the glosses only for the parts that i need okay what's the verb is the negation right before the verb in this sentence yes right this is the verb that we have that is the whole verbal complex and the negation word precedes this thing right and this is what i was trying to tell you if this negation was here right then the sentence has a different meaning main nahi pizza kha raha hu the sentence has a different meaning understand this i am only talking about the parts that is that is relevant for us i leave it for you to apply these things how how these ambiguities are resolved by human mind without us being confused about anything at all okay if this is the if this is the case now look at this sentence as it is this sentence usually means i am not eating pizza which means in the primary reading number 1 it negates the whole verb right it negates the whole verb therefore it gives us that reading will you believe it if i tell you the sentence is ambiguous in hindi in its secondary reading this negation may also negate pizza listen to this carefully may also negate pizza just like if it was available here it would have negated this one so by the virtue of being here which is not only before the verb but around the object too okay it might negate the object as well when it is negating the object then the meaning is different meaning is not sentential negation the meaning is main pizza nahi kha raha hu and and you can hear this thing in this spoken language as well main pizza nahi kha raha hu in this sentence which is not a clear declarative sentence you can hear that i am talking about i am not pizza eating something else just like not me someone else eat not eating not pizza eating something else is the reading in the secondary part do you agree with this therefore one can say this sentence could be ambiguous and 
again, please underline the part that you may be surprised today, but you know this, that this sentence was ambiguous. And our, our minds do not have any confusion at all whenever we say these things. All right? Now, this was the fun part for you to see. Let's see the syntactically significant part now. Okay? So, I, I wanted you to see this fun part because when negation is not a verbal negation, okay? when the negation is not a sentential negation, rather it is a constituent negation, in that case, whether it is a functional category or a lexical category is a different matter for discussion. Negation is a functional category. It belongs to the functional layer only when we are talking about sentential negation. That is syntactic aspect of negation, when it negates the entire verb. Therefore, it negates the entire sentence. Clear? Look at this. In Hindi, in a language like Hindi, this part of the verb is the only marker of aspect which roughly translates at as ing, right? Eating. Agree? Roughly translates at ing, which is also called progressive aspect marker or continuous aspect marker. These are the terms for this. This is an aspect, it is a continuous aspect marker or progressive aspect marker, which means that some something is in progress, that is the process of eat is in continuity. All right? This is the only word, only aspect marker in Hindi, which comes as a full word. Do you understand what I mean by full word? That is as a lexical unit. In other cases, aspect markers on Hindi, in Hindi, become a marker on the verb. Right? How do I say, I eat pizza? Khata hu. Right? Here is what I mean. In that case, we have to say, kha, this part, right? and ta. This is an aspect marker. And when we say this is an aspect marker, this is the verb root, an aspect marker, this does not come as an independent word. Right? How do I say I ate a pizza? Khaya. Right? Khaya. In that case, we have kha and something of that. These are not independent words. Do you, do you see this? Do you see this point? These are not independent words. The only thing that comes as independent word is ing. Get this thing? Now, look at the negation now. So, if, if you understand this part, that I, the, the point that I am trying to make, Now, take the negation. Uh, I, I can delete some parts of it to reduce problems. So, now we are done with its interpretations. Now, now we are talking about sentential negation only. Okay? Reading number one, I pizza nahi kha raha hu, not eating, where not is negating eating. It is possible, so here it is preceding the whole verb. It is possible to scramble negative word there. Is it possible? When I say, when I ask you this question, is it possible? What I mean is, is the sentence still grammatical if we scramble the word there? Main pizza kha nahi raha hu. Is it okay? 
Understand this? Still it is ambiguous. Keep in mind, it is still ambiguous. When we say, main pizza kha nahi raha hun, it can negate the whole complex, whole verb and it can also negate just this part, not the rest of it. See this thing? Now, when, what is the, what is the ambiguity there? When someone says, main pizza kha nahi raha hun, I, I am not, I might be doing something else with it. I am just buying it, carrying it, making it, doing anything, not eat. That is the ambiguity part. All right, all right. So, keeping that in mind, it is possible to bring the negation word here. And in, this, in the second reading, it is a, negat it's a sentence and negation marker. Get it? Now, listen. This is the point that I am trying to relate to what the, to the structure that you have here. It is possible to bring the negation word here, but it is not possible to bring the negation word here. Main pizza kha raha nahi hun. It is not possible. And it is definitely not possible to bring it any further. Main pizza kha raha hun nahi. See the point? This is, I am giving you a very rough sort of example to make the point that I have on the screen. It is, this is the tense marker, this is the aspect marker, right? It is above the aspect marker, below the tense marker. If, if we try to put our finger on the fishy nature of a functional category, for its exact location in the functional layer, it appears from such an example coming from Hindi that it is located below TP and above aspect phrase. Some people can, can claim what difference does it make? Obviously, it does not make any difference as long as we are not talking about the expansion of functional layer it makes a hell lot of a difference about the location of a functional element the moment we talk about the expansion of it. We need to know the hierarchical nature of the availability or the appearance of a particular functional element in the functional layer. All right? And even one example from any language of this sort is good enough to establish what we are trying to do theoretically. As long as we do not have a counter example to show, to, to, we do not have a counter example to dismiss this claim, this one example is good enough to establish a theoretical point. Okay? Get, get this thing, is this, is this point clear to, to some of you? I, I do not want to get into too many details of the sentence about its uh, tense aspect However, I did it in a way. Go ahead, if you have a question. Is this uh, sort of rule only for languages like Hindi? No. Only when Spanish? we talk about this, we, we got this thing, we got the evidence from Hindi. Once we made the claim, this applies to all the languages. Sir, what about sentence like sleeping is not good? Then that not is coming after sentence, means it is a sleeping that ing is the right. No, that, uh, that's, that's not the problem for, uh, for English, that's a pre pre predicative adjective okay? uh, in English first. The second thing is, it is possible, see English is SOV, SVO, SVO language. Okay? The, see, when you have a, I, I, I had given one example of English tense. Uh, there was a, uh, when we were discussing, uh, give, me, give me two more minutes and then we will stop. When we were discussing tense in English, in order to show that tense can really be separated from the verb, right? There are two 
two structures to look at. One is questions, where we know that only tense has to be extracted and fronted, right? Do, do I, did, did you buy a phone, right? If we are not looking at the question structure, then if you put a negation, when you negate a sentence, then you need to extract the tense. So, if I say, I eat pizza, how do I negate it? I? No, 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 I do not eat pizza. I do not eat pizza. Why are we bringing, where is this do coming from? And what is this do? Why do we not say, I not eat pizza? What is wrong with that sentence? That is the, now you can see, that is the marker of tense. So, for occurrence of negation in English, it needs to extract tense out of verb. Tense precedes negation and then negation occurs right before the verb. So, in a, in a sentence like is not, not good, it is not violating anything, its tense is preceding, it is a, it's, it's a, it's a uh, matter of coincidence that in such a sentence because of predicative adjective, tense marker and the verb both are the same, that is an auxiliary marker. But it is a, it's a regular phenomena of a language like English that tense has to be extracted in order to negate a sentence. Okay. It applies in all tenses. The example that you gave was example of a future tense. In that we have a clear auxiliary will, will not eat. But try negating a past tense sentence. I ate a pizza. How do we say that? I did not, did not is the contracted form of did not. So, I did not eat a pizza. We need to extract tense out and then negation comes in. So, when, see this is also an argument why some people use this as a, as an example for functional layer, I am sorry, we need to, we need to stop. Functional layer, uh, sorry, lexical layer, remind me about this, I will, I will talk to you. This, this is very interesting phenomena, the more you get into abstraction, the more you try to see them separately. We, we stop and uh, we discuss this some other time. That is later. Mm -hmm.